Hi guys, this video is a follow on from my green flashing light and a few other issues that people are facing with the new regulations and trying to get their head around the changes. I asked the CAA a number of questions and they've responded directly from policy. So this is fact, it's not fiction. We'll go through the responses, the questions and the responses right now so that hopefully you've got some kind of understanding or answers to the questions that you may be having, especially around green flashing lights and the additions of payloads and the sub 900 gram threshold that is available. So let's go through them. So question number one is, can you confirm that the sub 900 gram A1 allowance applies only to UK1 or C1 class marked aircraft and that C0 and UK0 aircraft remain limited to sub 250 gram for A1 operations? The sub 900 gram threshold does not represent a general A1 allowance based on mass alone. It relates specifically to the maximum design mass associated with UK1 or C class 1 marked aircraft. C0 and UK0 aircraft remain limited to subcategory A1 and their maximum takeoff mass is 250 grams. Can you confirm that adding an external strobe does not make a C0 or UK0 aircraft equivalent to C1 or UK1 and may invalidate its A1 eligibility if the mass exceeds 250 grams? For example, does adding an aftermarket strobe invalidate a C rating status and make it legacy? Adding a third party strobe light to a drone would be considered adding a payload and if not part of the manufacturer's approved accessories or declaration of conformity would result in the aircraft no longer meeting its class marking requirements and would be treated as a non-class marked drone. It is also to note that the addition of a payload should not take the UAS weight to exceed its maximum takeoff mass. How are operators of C0 and UK0 aircraft expected to comply with a green flashing light requirement for night operations where the fitted light is disabled during recording. If there is a question with the operation of the flashing lights on the product, the manufacturer can be contacted directly in the first instance. If the manufacturer does not provide a satisfactory response, the product can be referred to the CAA's Market Surveillance Authority, MSA, at msainquiries at caa.co.uk, and the CAA may investigate as appropriate. So an important addition to this is that the CAA have actually referred DGI to the Market and Surveillance Authority because they've been making incorrect statements. So we'll see what happens with that. Can you confirm that there's no regulatory requirement for a green flashing light to be visible at a specified distance, for example, three miles? This is for the manufacturer to comply with the standards set out for the class markings. Is the use of manned aviation styled navigation lighting on an unmanned aircraft acceptable? There is no specific regulatory requirement for the use of manned aviation styled navigation lighting on an unmanned aircraft. It is the operator's responsibility to ensure that all such lighting attached to the aircraft does not affect the safety or performance of the aircraft and that the flight remains compliant with the applicable regulations. So it's up to you though, as the remote pilot and the operator, how you conduct your operations. And all I can advise is that you do that legally and safely. Now, I hope you found this video useful and hopefully I'll see you in the next one, but safe flying guys.